WPTV Town Hall. Coverage collapse. This is absolutely by far the worst storm I have ever seen. It's a nightmare. It's like a dam broke. We're here, we're here, we're here. It sends a chill down your spine. There's no words to describe it. Complete devastation. Floridians face storms every year. In less than 12 months, only two major hurricanes have slammed Florida's coast. Run from water, hide from wind. But perhaps the biggest storm so many are up against right now? Consumers need additional protection. Homeowners insurance. I mean, for where we are, just very expensive. 30% again this past year when I renewed. I just didn't expect the cancellation. I have never made a claim, ever. So it was, it, was a very, it was a big surprise. It's an industry that's been unstable for a long time, growing even more volatile as Florida takes direct hits from destructive hurricanes and policy writers pulling out of the state or going insolvent due to a surge in claim fraud and litigation. I tell people every day, if your insurance rates have not gone up at least 50% in the last two years, you don't own a home. The Insurance Information Institute lists the average Florida premium at $6,000 a year, the highest in the country, and far from the national average, that's less than a third of that. It does make us wonder, is there gonna be another increase next year? We don't know what to anticipate. As more insurance companies have failed and with less competition, hundreds of thousands of homeowners have been pushed into citizens, the state-run insurer of last resort. It's like a snowball starting on top of the mountain and coming down and it's a full-fledged avalanche. Hoping to slow an ongoing crisis, Florida's legislature passed new regulations to overhaul property insurance, with the man who oversees insurance for the state saying it'll take time and the patience of frustrated homeowners to help fix a complex problem. We haven't seen the types of changes in policy rate relief yet. That is about an 18 month window that's going to take place. I think there's optimism that it will stabilize, but it's sort of with, you know, fingers and toes crossed because it's hurricane season. Tonight, we hear directly from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. State Senator Tina Polsky, along with Treasure Coast State Representative Toby Overdorf. Insight from industry experts, Robert Norberg, president of Arden Insurance, along with Mark Freelander of the Insurance Information Institute and an expert seeing the impact the insurance collapse is having on Florida's housing market. CEO Holly Meyer Lucas of the Meyer Lucas Real Estate Team. They are directly tackling the concerns so many of you are facing, navigating the coverage collapse. Good evening and welcome to this town hall special coverage collapse. I'm Shannon Cake. And I'm Matt Sesney. For the next hour, we're going to talk about homeowners insurance in the state of Florida. How we got to this point of having the most expensive insurance in the country and what relief may be ahead for us. You've just met our panelists. We'll be getting to them in just moments from now. But first, what everyone is talking about tonight, and that is... Hurricane Adalia. Yeah, right you are, Shannon. That Category 3 hurricane made landfall in North Florida in the last days of August with big storm surge and heavy winds. And the early estimates on damage there, close to $20 billion. It's made many very wary about what it could do to the insurance industry. That's right. And on that note, Matt, we want to get right to Gregory Buck with National Risk Experts here in the audience tonight. Gregory, go ahead and stand if you would for me, please, sir. We first heard your voice on NBC Nightly News a couple of nights after Adalia made impact on the West Coast. Your take, your prediction on what Adalia will do to all of our premiums moving forward. Thank you, Shannon, very much for the opportunity. And I, yeah, I think the, uh, there's a lot of people that are saying, Idalia, maybe it's a little murky what it's going to do, but from my perspective, you have allocation of reinsurance that is gonna to have to be placed in that area, which many of the carriers don't recognize or ha had not even thought about at this point because it's never hit the Big Bend area before. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have fraud that whether or not they were actually of value or the, 
I'm sure it's a little bit more lax in those areas in, as far as inspections as compared to the Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward County areas. And as well, you also have issues with uh, fraud going on all over the place. So, you know, you're going to have that. And will that impact? Yeah, it could keep some of our carriers that are already on the brink uh, down around that area or even below. So we're very concerned about that as well. You're expecting a bump? Oh, I would say that we're expecting bumps every year. I don't think it's unfair to say that anybody that lives in this area is going to see rate increases year after year, and I do not see that stopping, no. Gregory Buck setting the table for us tonight. Matt, you take it from here. Yeah, I want to take it to uh, one of the people on our panel. I want to start with you, Robert Norberg, because uh, you're out there dealing with policyholders every day. People who come into your office or call you about being dropped or having these high premiums. Really, in about 30 seconds or so, tell me what you're seeing uh, right now dealing with policyholders every day in this part of Florida. Well, right now it is uh, kind of the collapse or chaos uh, that's out there. Um, and pretty much everybody is seeing between that 30 to 50 percent rate increase. And I agree with Greg, it's not going to stop. It may settle down. Um, but being in the marketplace we are, I don't see rates going back to where they were in the previous years. Hmm. Shannon? We move to real estate expert Holly Meyer Lucas. Holly, your business is deeply impacted almost daily on the skyrocketing premiums we're all seeing here in Florida. 30 seconds, your take tonight. Yeah, we're in the middle of a housing crisis here in South Florida. There's no other way to put it. We have buyers who can't buy homes. Uh, we have homeowners who are needing to sell their homes because they can't afford their homeowner's insurance anymore. And what happens with that tinderbox is it starts impacting landlords and tenants. And so what's happening is people are leaving the area because they can't afford to live here anymore. And I think the long-term effects on our infrastructure is really what we as leaders need to be looking at on the long term. Holly, thanks so much. And to yeah. all of our panelists for being here tonight, our WPTV right. News Channel 5 editors. Mm -hmm. We've been talking with many of you at home for the last couple of weeks. We welcomed many of you here to express your concerns. So welcome, audience. Thank you for being here. A show of hands tonight. Yeah, let's uh, have a show of go hands. Ahead, I mean, Matt. how many have had their premiums go up a lot in the last year or so, right? Everybody. And I'm in that group, too. That's right. And many of you talked to us uh, early on coming in, whether it be by phone or right. in the reporting we've done over the last couple of weeks and months. Some of you were so concerned about the premiums, you were considering a move either regionally or possibly out of the state of Florida. How many of you here in studio tonight are considering a move of some sort? Show of hands. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five. I want to go right to this gentleman in the back. We were talking in the beginning um, when you first came to the studio here. Stand up for a minute, sir. What's your first name? Ontario. Ontario. You live where? Uh, here in West Palm Beach. Here in West Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. You told me you are considering a move. Yeah, I actually am. Um, just realizing, especially the, the cost of, of real estate here, and then to add insurance on top of that, and I look at other states where the prices of, of real estate is just so much more attractive. And it just seems like I can have a better quality of life. Mm. Uh, I think Mark Freelander is with us by Zoom in Tallahassee. Mark, is that true? Are there other states where, where real estate is better? We hear this. it's the most expensive here in Florida. Well, other real estate markets are very expensive as well. We've seen huge spikes in the cost of real estate uh, since the pandemic began. And the other factor, when you look at a lot of states, particularly the Northeast, taxes. We have a very low tax threshold here in Florida, but you go to, say, New York, Connecticut, areas like that, your property taxes are going to be a lot larger than your insurance bills here in Florida. So you have to kind of weigh the pros and the cons. Is the lifestyle in Florida better? Will you pay more for insurance? Or do you want to pay more in property tax and live in Connecticut? All right, very good. Thank you, Mark Shannon. Our panelists were talking about this very topic before we came in studio tonight. Holly, though, you did share you have helped 20 families, almost 20 families, yeah, move and share that. Yeah, at least 20 families that have needed to sell their home here locally to because they can't afford their insurance anymore. And um, those folks are, I would say, half of them are staying here locally because they've been able to find something else. Usually it's downsizing into something else. Mm -hmm. um, and the other half are leaving. You know, they're taking let's say they have $400,000 in equity, that $400,000 doesn't buy much here in, in Palm Beach County, right? So they're leaving for the Carolinas, for, um, for Georgia, and to the quality of life um, point, and it's all, it's all relative in mm -hmm. terms of affordability. Taxes are based on a, on a percentage, and they're based on, pro they're, they're, it's all relative, and I think what we need to look at is how many people have relocated to our area, and how many now are leaving, and what jobs are leaving. How many teachers and nurses are leaving our area for the Carolinas? 
like what that's going to do to our infrastructure is really what we need to be looking at. Good point, Matt. Yeah, I want to talk to Lori. Lori, stand up for a minute, if you don't mind, because you had a good question when we were first talking uh, this evening about uh, the fact that a lot of your neighbors feel like they're being unfairly punished with these rate increases, right? The question they're asking is why, why they're being punished with high premiums and cancellations, and they haven't made a single claim. So right. Sometimes for decades, right? Yes, 20 to 25 years, and they're also wondering what um, insurance companies, um, uh, I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. It's <laughs> all right. I uh, mean, go ahead. What, what can be done with insurance companies to raise rates in affordable increments? Uh, Robert, I'll let is, you take that. I mean, why, why are people who've never made claims before getting these ridiculous rate increases? Well, think? with insurance, it's the law of large numbers. So just because you haven't had any claims individually, the whole pool of people have had claims. And the companies have to compensate for those claims by raising rates. Uh, plus, in the past few years, we've had a lot of uh, litigated claims. We were the highest litigated place in the country, and so that's all that got to be a factor. And then you throw in a couple of hurricanes. So the carriers out there have to compensate, and they have to adjust rates. Robert, thank you. We want to mention, and we'll get right over to you in just a moment, Greg, I see you raising your hand. We want to dip into our newsroom and just let you know at home, we are continuing the conversation uh, through our social media platforms. We're actually streaming this live on WPTV.com, uh, our mobile app as well, and of course on our social media platforms. You see Tanya Rogers there scrolling through some of your questions coming in from home, so keep them coming. We'll be bringing those questions here in studio, Matt. Yeah, there's a lot uh, more to come. Boy, this, this uh, segment zip really by, but we've sure got did. issues issues such as fraud and litigation. We also want to talk about citizens insurance, so stay with us as coverage collapse continues. You're watching a WPTV Town Hall coverage collapse. This is incredible. Well, you know, that's we were the unfortunate few that got hit the hardest. Richard Martin is still waiting, walking by his upstairs condo. It's still sitting there untouched after being shredded by this tornado almost one year ago. With the building permits, the insurance companies and everything else, so that's why it's taken so long, I guess. <laughs> It was a harrowing night. The community clipped by feeder bands spawned by Hurricane Ian. The winds tossed dumpsters, cars, and air conditioning units around like toys and ripped off Richard's roof. I just heard a bang. Everything was in on top of me. I was on the floor, literally under the table, thank goodness, but digging myself out. Luckily, Richard survived. But when he called his insurance company, his policy only covered theft and fire. Uh, apparently, I have no claim because I did not have wind damage insurance. So now Richard waits for his condo association to repair his roof. They said it'll probably be another four to six months. Just across the parking lot. Oh, oh my God. I'm still not over it. Susan Burstein has her own story. Were you here the night the tornado hit? Oh, yeah. I was... Luckily, um, had just gotten off the phone. The trees came and knocked down the railing. The house and everything was like like sucked out. Susan was covered for all of it, but says it took months to get help from her insurance company. Oh, I had a contractor, a wonderful contractor. He fixed my apartment in three weeks. It wasn't a matter of that. It was a matter of getting the money. Susan said getting the payout was painful. Uh, they paid part of it. And, you know, they blow bald. It wouldn't have covered everything. Condo and construction premiums here in Florida were already rising before this. The Champlain Towers South crumbled in the dark of night. 98 people died. That cave in sent condo insurance costs skyrocketing, with older construction here in Florida now ordered to undergo additional structural analysis. For newcomers like Susan, have you seen anything as a New Yorker like the insurance market in Florida? Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. This is a nightmare. And time and again, we keep hearing that same story from homeowners these days, and you're not wrong. Take a look at this graphic we've made for you. Here in Florida, the average homeowner is paying $6,000 for homeowners insurance. The national average, 1700 So in this block, we want to tackle what can we do, Matt? Yeah, what can we do? And certainly the Florida legislature has tried to do things this year with a special session. I want to take it over now to uh, 
State Senator Tina Polsky and State Representative Toby Overdorf. Uh, Mr. Overdorf, I'll start with you since you're the party in power. I know there were reforms put in place, but you know, one of the big questions I get from a lot of people, and even came up in discussion here, is why can't government just put a cap on this and put the brakes on what they're charging us? And it's a pretty simple question. When you look at caps, uh, we're, we're looking at taking it out of the free market, if you will. And so I, I would disagree with putting caps on things. Why don't we cap our home values? Why don't we cap uh, what you can, you can make? I, I just don't believe in putting a cap on something because I believe that that is something that then interferes potentially with the free market and therefore bringing other companies in here, which ultimately will hopefully so help to solve the problem. All right, I'll give you a chance to talk about the reforms, right? There were reforms that were passed in that special session this year. Not only in the special session, or the second special session, or the session of this last year, but yes, we've been working on insurance and insurance reforms uh, for literally the last couple of years here. Um, under, under Governor DeSantis, we've done a variety of different things with, uh, with the House, with our, our partners in, um, in the Senate as well. Think about this. Uh, in the last several years, and a 2021 study showed that 80% of all homeowner litigation happened right here in the state of Florida. 80% mm -hmm. of all. Yet, the state of Florida only had 8% of the homeowner claims. So there has to be um, a give and take here where we need to get a hold of this litigation. And in fact, we did this year with landmark litigation reforms. All right, I want to go to State Senator Tina Polsky. I saw you moving your head. <laughs> but I know Democrats wanted to do more. I'll, I'll give you your chance to speak up now and, and tell us what your side of the aisle was pushing for here. Sure. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity. This is the number one issue, as which is why you're having a town hall, and it's the number one issue that we get calls for in our office. Um, so the reforms that uh, you know my colleague has talked about were done in a rushed special session in a three-day period of time. This is a massive, complex issue. And there was no testimony, there were no amendments, there was no way to change the bill because it had to match the House and the Senate and the governor was only going to sign this, this uh, legislation. So how can you fix this complex problem in three days? Now, there were some other bills granted, but they did not go to the same length. They also chose 90% to only focus on litigation. I disagree with the study that Rep. Overdorf talked about. That is a flawed study. That is not accurate. That 80% of all the litigation has come just from the state of Florida. There have been numerous uh, economists who have shown that to be false. Uh, but why is there a lot of litigation? I'm not going to say there's not. Because we are the slowest paying state of insurance claims, uh, I believe, in the country. So if insurance companies did what they should, you don't need to litigate. And the other issue I think when we talk about fraud is, I don't know what, you saw Jimmy Petronas in the package, what he's doing to investigate the, the uh, 12,000 complaints okay. that have come in since January. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned Jimmy Petronas because we're gonna go to a quick uh, a quote from Jimmy Petronas. We talked to him, he gave us the luxury of sitting down with him. He was talking about something that homeowners can do to try and save money on their premiums. It's the, the, the revival of the WIN mitigation program where the state picks up the tab. He explains how this program works, so take a listen. I had a windstorm mitigation inspection. I paid 150 bucks. Um, they got up in my attic and they certify with greater underwriting notes of what my house is built. Do I have hurricane clips? What type of nails were used on my roof? They document it all. They submit that certified form to the carrier. In my case, my insurance dropped immediately $700. I got a $700 check back from my carrier, and then my rates moving forward were $700 cheaper. $700 cheaper. Now, he said he paid $150 for that, but the state's picking up the tab for that right now. Does anybody in the audience, have they heard of that program? Have they tried to use it at all? Yes, you're raising your hand. You've tried to use this program? Stand up, please. What's your first name? Paul. Paul. Tell me about, you've used this program. The wind mitigation yeah. inspection. They yeah. come, they inspect your home, they determine that your, your house is up to specifications, and then you get a discount with that and certificate. did it work? Did you get a discount? I did. Can you tell us how much? Um, I'm going to say probably about $600. $600. That's yeah. significant. And that, that's pretty much, Robert, is that kind of consistent from what you're hearing? Yeah, um, I've seen premiums get cut in half by people that didn't know about the credits before. And if they have all the hurricane credits that are up to the Miami-Dade code, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's a big game changer when you're talking to people. All right, we do have the website for that, I believe, for anybody who's interested in uh, signing up for that program. It's uh, mysafeflhome.com. So 
There it is right there on the screen, mysafeflhome.com to sign up for those wind mitigation uh, yeah. reports. And I understand the program's pretty popular right now. Do they qualify for that? That is grant money. Yeah. That does not have to be paid back. Right. Okay. And Shannon? In, that's $10,000. Yeah. Go ahead. That's $10,000 of grant money. That's for the, for the repairs and for the qualifying issues there. All right. So it goes beyond paying for the inspection. It also, there's grant $10, money for $10,000 towards the improvement of wind mitigation, yes. All right. Fantastic. That's what we Shannon. wanted to tackle with this segment was give you even if they're very small savings, nuggets, right? A couple of hundred dollars here and there, they can all add up. We have a couple of tips that we gathered along the way. Again, very uh, minimal, uh, but, but again, every little bit helps. Check in once a year, reassess your risk, get to know your insurance agent. This is a relationship, right? Uh, yeah, and, right? And just like any other business. Our next tip, if we could roll to the next one, trim in areas that you may not need, evaluate that policy every single year, make sure you're not, uh, you know, you, you're not carrying too too much coverage in one area and too little in another area. I want to bring uh, back in Greg Buck. Um, you had talked to me coming into to town hall, water pipes. You talked to me about a water heater and just keeping your home tidy. How can all of that okay. help drive down your, your premium? Well, thank you, Shannon, again. Uh, one of the things that we always uh, see is, you know, when our inspections come in, and this is a small thing, but if your home is unkempt, the carriers are going to look at you and they're going to say, well, yeah, it's a kind of a nice home, but this has to be cleaned up. They give you so much time to do it, but it also presents an attitude to them. So mm -hmm. they want to make sure that things are in order, tidy. The other things would be your water heater. Um, did you replace it in the last 10 years? Because obviously there are some carriers now that will not even give you coverage unless you've done so. Mm -hmm. The other issues would be your water pipes. Some of the major claims outside of hurricanes have been water damage, and that's either been through uh, vermin chewing through the pipes. Yes. It's also the water pipes being old and outdated and or the glue has come, uh, come apart. Some of those things you can get to, some of them you can't, but you have to at least see what can be done. Greg, thanks. Any other quick tip? We're going to hit yeah. a quick break. Yeah. Matt, has anybody any done anything tips? that we haven't? I know everybody's bought roofs, right? Raise your hand if you've, if you've looked at roofs, right? Stand up for a minute, ma'am. You bought a roof, right? I bought, I that, bought a roof. Those yes. aren't cheap. No, they're not. Twenty-eight thousand. Did you end up saving on? on yeah. No. You did not. No, I have impact windows. Didn't save anything. Really? That's right. Robert, what's I the? I think one of the issues there is, uh, you know, uh, the the wind mitigation credits have certain guidelines that you have to follow. So, for example, if you upgraded all your windows but didn't do your doors, you still have a problem. Um, but it, everything has to be to the letter of that form. And then you should definitely be getting credits if you weren't getting them before. Right. All we right. have three hands here in the front row. We're going right. to get to you right on the other side of the break. But for yep. now, you're watching a town hall special coverage collapse on WPTV News Channel 5. WPTV Town Hall coverage collapse. In Florida, the biggest storm over insurance has been swirling in court. There are games that are being played that allowed people to game the system. We don't need an environment where people are suing and settling. That's Florida Chief Financial Officer Jimmy Petronas. The suing and settling has been going on for years. It happens like this. Homeowners sometimes pressured to sign over insurance claims rights to a contractor. When the insurance company finds no damage and denies the claim, the contractor sues and the insurance company's bills pile up. With Florida making up almost 80% of the country's insurance lawsuits over claims. We're spending three out of every four dollars the insurance companies are paying. We're going out in litigation costs, not actual claims. It takes time for the new legislation to to kick in. Ken Johnson of FAU's Real Estate Initiative says some of the new legislation to counter the problem this past year targeted one-way attorney fees and signing over those claims rights. So we had a business model that was upside down. We had uh, loopholes in Florida statutes that were open and the Florida legislature finally said enough's enough and closes the loopholes. The loopholes closing just as the whole system seemingly was about to collapse. The losses for insurance companies have been steep. Some have gone insolvent. Others have left the state. I can almost hear people sitting at home saying, why didn't you do this sooner? Why didn't exactly. they do this sooner? 100%. 100%. 
100 percent. I'm glad he said that. He was honest about that. Sir, stand up. What is your first name? My name is Mike. Mike, you had a question about the fraud and litigation issue, which has made all of our premiums go crazy. Florida has the highest homeowners insurance claims in litigation. 79% of the country's insurance lawsuits are in Florida. Will the new reforms passed by DeSantis help with this problem? All right, so I'm going to direct that over, I guess, to Representative Toby Overdorf. We were talking about the reforms. Uh, answer his question. Absolutely. Um, it, it directly addresses it. It directly addresses not only the fraud, the assignment of benefits, one-way attorney fees. Uh, it, it looks at a variety of different things. We had a, uh, a final hearing where we had over 243 public comments about this that were, were coming forward. So this is something that is directly addressed by this. It hasn't been addressed in 23 years. This is landmark legislation that was all-encompassing. So it's something that I've, you know, we are very proud of, but it's going to take time because these new policies now apply to new, literally new insurance policies. They don't apply to the old policies. Senator, I'm going to be fair because I know you're even disputing that 80% figure on the litigation. Go ahead. Yeah, that study that everyone keeps citing because it sounds good uh, has flawed data and many folks have asked for how they came up with that and, and no one will give an answer. Um, we had legislation a couple of years ago that required reports from the Office of Insurance Regulation. They never provided those reports right. about litigation. So they're, they're hiding information. But as far as you know, what the legislation did, it Think about this. It's a obviously very complex problem. I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers, but it's multifaceted. It's not just lawyers suing. The insurance company has a large role to play. There was nothing in that legislation that brought insurance companies uh, to bear for what they have done. And litigation is your final way of protecting a consumer because how else are they supposed to get paid? Oh. And the last thing I just want to say, yeah. Matt, about this, um, the legislation is it gives insurance companies no incentive to pay. There is no way okay, to get Senator. them yeah. to yeah, I would think, get, that by real quick. that yeah, the insurance, quick. Accountability, insurance accountability bill right. absolutely did exactly what All Martina right. is talking okay. about here. We'll leave it at that. And I want to go to Shannon because she's got more questions on the other side of the room. I have Shannon. Debbie Pratt right here. Debbie, you were talking to me prior to the town hall. Literally, do you mind standing up so our sure. camera can catch you? Um, share with me, you literally, your concerns were so tremendous. You were talking that you were praying each night about whether or not you would end up homeless. That is true. Your um, question on that. My question is, what can you tell me today that's going to make me feel like I'm not going to lose my home or everyone here? What can you tell me that's going to change and make me feel like, okay, in three years, I'll still be okay in my home? I'll be, my home will be paid for in three years, but I have a fear now that I've never had before. So what can you tell me today that's going to change that? So we're talking litigation tonight. We're talking, mm -hmm. about, but literally people are in their homes worried that they could be homeless. Um, maybe we start with the lawmakers and move out to panelists. Do we have ideas on what more can be done moving forward now? I, I mean, there are a lot of things that we, first of all, just going backwards, we should have done a lot more over the course of, both of us started six years ago, and this was not at all at the forefront of what we've been doing. As we've gone on through the last, uh, we started with the governor. As uh, you know, we've seen his tenure, only very recently did he start focusing on it. But we spent so much time this past legislative session on nonsense and culture wars when this number one problem was not even dealt with until a special session. Again, like I said, a three day rushed um, extravaganza that produced a one-way bill, as far as I'm concerned. We have a lot of ideas. Right. I, looking at just um, quick budget items, uh, my staff and I identified $192 million in garbage in a state National Guard, in yeah, election I, security well, that, that we could use we, we, to hire inspectors and investigators to investigate the fraud. Yeah, this is right. a Republican or a Democrat hire problem, hire right, Matt? We, this is a Florida problem. Agree so with we want to talk about Real quick, Polsky, yeah, is that real quick. I don't want to get into a, a, a I'm not a going to go there. Here, yeah. this, is, this is a issue that we absolutely agree that has to have more done sure. on insurance. I okay. agree more. And I will say that we have had two special sessions and a full session dealing with this with over 11 bills addressing specifically right. on insurance. And the byproduct of this is that most people are getting to citizens now because of this fraud and litigation issue. And citizens has swelled. Uh, Shannon, you've got some numbers on right. citizens, right? And, and let's talk to Mark Friedlander about that. Mark, you've been very yeah. vocal, uh, saying, quote, when your backstop insurer is the insurer of only choice, you're in trouble. Your take tonight. 
when you see citizens still growing at a record pace, you know the market is remaining in turmoil. There's no other state in the country where the backstop insurer is your number one market. In fact, citizens has grown to 18% market share now. Doubled their market share in just the last couple of years, and there's no slowing down. They predict 1.7 million customers by year end would be the highest level on record because private companies are not writing coverage, they're restricting coverage, they're pulling out of the market. It's turmoil for consumers right now. So let's take a look at the numbers. Citizens is covering 1.3 million customers in Florida right now. That's 18% of the Florida market. Some, some say this is good news. There's a goal right now to move 200,000 of the policies currently covered by citizens to three new private insurers coming into the state of Florida. Robert Norberg, is this good news, these three companies coming in? Yeah, and I want to address her question. I can't give you any guarantees, but what we've seen since the legislation passed We've seen claims drop for litigated claims. We've seen three, actually five companies come into Florida because they have the good legislation now where they're not going to get sued. Um, and we're seeing the assumption numbers come. So when these other companies come in, that's a good thing for the marketplace. And it will eventually spur competition, which is ultimately what we need. Yeah, I got a citizen's question over here. Stand up, uh, please. What is your name, ma'am? Hi, Amy Stern. Hi, Amy. What's your citizen's question? Um, well, basically, for I know that for, um, if they foresee Citizens Property Insurance Corporation continuing to play a more significant role assisting homeowners, I do understand that there are other competition, you know, coming in that are smaller that are actually giving better deals and some of the larger conglomerates that are, you know, here, which is ironic because they are smaller. So you would think that that wouldn't be in play. But do you foresee that Citizens is going to have to step up to cover more people because they are not able to cover insurance and yeah. the you know exorbitant costs? Yeah, Robert, you're nodding your head. You have a lot of experience with Citizens. Go yeah, ahead. I think that depends. I think uh, right now everybody should be looking at their Citizens policy and shopping it around and seeing if those other small companies are willing to write. Um, there's a lot of underwriting rules that keep people out of the, the standard market. Um, and as the citizens' rates will grow and they will go up, they'll be closer to these standard markets. So and, then it's a good opportunity to go to those standard markets. And the markets. state's trying to move people out of citizens' right now, right? Correct, There's a yeah. goal of like over 200,000 policies yeah. to move them The assumption out. program is working. It's working very well. Um, but, Robert, there's devil in the details, right? I mean, yes. some of it's not, a, it's not, for a lot of people, some people, it's not a great deal. Right. And that's the, the key. If you get an assumption letter, the immediate thing to do is call your agent, discuss the pros and cons. It's not always a one-way deal. Uh, can I just bring yeah, up? Yeah, real quick. We're down to like yeah. 15 so seconds. If, this, if you are getting uh, kicked off citizens to a private insurer, it's because that private insurer um, is offering you something that's 20 percent or less. So you could very well get up, be kicked off citizens and have to pay 20 percent more. All right. No, Senate, but correct. Senate. But the yeah. the the numbers of citizens are okay. going to be approaching higher limits next year. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Robert. We're going to take a break. We have more of coverage collapse coming up. Stay with us. This is a WPTV town. The quintessential Florida lifestyle, the envy of the country, at least nine months of the year. But when hurricanes bear down and carve a path through the Sunshine State, insurance premiums historically have gone through the roof. It's really been bad for a very long time. It's probably the biggest issue that I hear from constituents. Their insurance is going up to the point where it has become the issue why they can't afford to stay in their homes anymore. Homeowners insurance in Florida is something lawmakers on both sides of the aisle agree is at a breaking point. And now Andrew has been upgraded from a Category 4 to a Category 5. Much of the problem stems from deals done after Hurricane Andrew, when insurance companies pulled out of Florida or shut down altogether. A state-backed insurer popped up back then, some say taking on too many policies. So when smaller companies finally moved back in with them, lawmakers approved just one loan ratings giant, Demotech. Ratings companies give insurers ratings that then give consumers the confidence that their insurer is fiscally sound and can pay their claim if disaster ultimately strikes. 
Recently, Florida lawmakers tried tackling the problem by backing Florida's reinsurers. They're essentially insurance companies for, well, the insurance companies. Lawmakers allocated billions in bailout money, but that didn't stop the mass exodus of insurers in recent years. Some of the companies that pulled out cited hurricane threats. Others blamed the legal climate in the Sunshine State and rampant lawsuits from Florida consumers. Five law firms in Florida are responsible for over 90% of the lawsuits. Lawmakers did just approve a series of new rules clamping down on frivolous lawsuits. Even so, 15 companies have stopped writing new business in Florida since January of last year. Three more have announced withdrawal in just the last few months, driving prices even higher. The leadership in the legislature has not fully address this issue. We we have been discussing it and discussing it for years and yet here we are in a crisis. We didn't fix the problem. We dealt with the lawsuit problem. It's going to take probably five years in my opinion for rates to really come down significantly. We need to start thinking outside the box and have a new way of looking at this because if we're going to do the same old same old we're going to have the same old problems. All right, five years is the longest uh, wait and see uh, period of time I've heard. We talked to CFO Jimmy Petronas about how long we have to wait till things start getting better. This is what he said. Take a listen. We needed a correction, and again, 18 months is what I need. A lot of the relief that I'm looking forward to seeing come to the state of Florida, they're not coming until after November. Why is that? Hurricane season. Why does somebody want to come and invest in a state if they may be susceptible to hurricane catastrophic damage. So again, who in the audience can wait five years for a fix? Who can afford <laughs> to wait five years? That's a long time. Who can afford to wait even 18 months? Hmm. So what we're hearing tonight is this is right. needed now. Right. Matt? Yeah, I think we want to go to Tanya Rogers, who's at the social media desk. She's got some questions coming in online. Tanya, are you there? I am, and many of the questions have been along the line of the ones that you've been mentioning with the audience, but one I wanted to share with you, this is from Shirley Stalley. She asked, what can you do if you've had a wind mitigation inspection and you did not pass the roof? You don't agree with the report. What are the options? That's her question. What can she do at this point? It's going to take, I don't know, Mark or Robert want to take that? I mean, do you have a, a way to object to it or contend it yeah, in some uh, way? Robert, go I ahead. I would uh, get with your agent and uh, review it. Make sure everything yeah. is done to the code. Mm. And there, the agent could point out problems, maybe with your report, and you could do some minor fixes to get those done. Right. But again, like I said earlier, if your form is done properly, there should be no reason you're not getting credit. All right, we got another question in the audience. Deborah, stand up, because uh, we were talking about premiums, and you got a question about seniors. Real important, people on fixed incomes. Mm. Go ahead. Yeah, I uh, run a nonprofit called Eat Better, Live Better, where mm -hmm. we feed families who can't afford to eat. We've had a huge influx of families, uh, senior citizens in particular, who are right. being priced out of home ownership. And when you ask, why are you coming through our doors at 80 years old, never needing assistance before? Mm -hmm. It's because of the property insurance rates that they can't keep up with on a fixed income. Right. So my question is two parts. Will there be a fund or any type of support for seniors on a fixed income to assist with those costs, which are pricing them out of home ownership? And are there any plans in place to support rebuilding communities if there are several uninsured homes and a natural disaster happens. All right, lots to unpack there. Maybe I should go to our lawmakers about that. That's a pretty good question. Who wants to take it first? Um, Senator, mean, go ahead. Sure. You know, there aren't plans to do that, as you mentioned, um, as you suggested. But, you know, there was recently uh, a huge walkout at Century Village in Pembroke Pines uh, because we saw the Surfside collapse. So, um, reforms that are needed for large condos as well as property insurance um, and how a senior citizen on a fixed income can afford all that change, you know, I don't know. But there is so much more money that we have and that we love to brag about, you know, the surplus and the budget and how much money we, we have. We should put money okay. to where people need it. This is the economic issue of our time. All right. And I gotta, there's so a lot of money I gotta out give there. Representative what I, what I would say on yeah. that is this is, a, this is an issue that hits home. Um, my mom is one of those folks and she literally came to me, she had her insurance canceled and she had this, and we sat down together. Luckily we found a great insurance agent uh, south of us that was pa absolutely fabulous, got her into a policy, but it is an absolute concern we have. I do believe that we are going to be doing something that 
on that this coming year. You have raised an incredibly good point, mm -hmm. as has the woman in the back who talked about her, her home and possibly losing that. So I absolutely agree. Ray Whitley, you're with Faith in Florida. If you don't mind standing, please, sir. You work with congregations, you say, all across South Florida. Yes. Tell me what you are experiencing seeing. It's not just seniors struggling. We are experiencing people who are afraid of losing their homes and churches are, are uh, losing members because people are just moving out of the state. Uh, that senior question is really, really heavy because we have seniors who are deciding to either get the insurance or live. And they're opting not to get it. Now with Florida, more than likely we will get a hurricane. What happens to them? So these are just some of the concerns that we're hearing from the congregation and from our, our, our clergy persons. You know, maybe we should take that to Mark Freelander, who represents a large part of the insurance industry. Mark in Tallahassee, he makes some good points here. Yeah, all sectors of insurance are having issues now with affordability as well as availability and problems spread throughout the insurance market. So we're seeing every type of property having a significant issue with getting affordable coverage at this point. Mark, thank you. I want to go to Holly Meyer Lucas very quickly before we wrap with looking yeah. for some hope here. Holly, you said you've had 20 people you've assisted in the last couple of months to move. Question. In your opinion, do you think Florida is becoming uninsurable? Oh, that's such a such a good question. Um, I would say that Florida is not is not unique. We like to throw in throw around the hurricane um, dynamic here as as the reason for all of this. Oklahoma has tornadoes. California has wildfires, earthquakes. This is something that is a nationwide issue. There are states in trouble straight across across the country. We were talking um, in the green room, and I was asking him how how they liaise with their colleagues in, for example, in Texas and California, where the insurance issue is the same. You could copy and paste what you're saying and sub in earthquake for hurricane and it would be the same in California. And so I think that putting pressure on our local officials, but also the, the um, on our government to handle this how we did the banking crisis with, like I'm a real estate agent, right? I have to liaise with an, ins an appraiser and an inspector in order for someone to get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Why is that so regulated? And why is the insurance part not? I think putting tougher regulations in place um, is something that, like we've done it before, we did it recently, and it doesn't need to take a full on recession for us to get there. Glimmers of hope, mm. Holly Meyer Lucas. Yeah, you know. Thank you. Right? We okay. love that. Okay. We're looking for hope, Matt, as yeah, we wind down tonight. Absolutely. We, we're going to do the, the final word with our panel. I want to go right down the line. I'll start with Robert. And, and I know, Mark, you probably can't see, but I'll give you a cue when it's time. But I want you to take about 20 seconds or so and talk about the future. And if there is, is hope uh, for all of us out here who are living and working and even retired here in Florida. Robert, I'll start yeah. with you. I, I, th I think the big thing everybody out there needs to know is look at your policy, talk to your agent. If your agent doesn't give you the answers you want, find a new agent. Uh, because there is availability of product out there. You're just going to have to work a little harder, do your due diligence, and make sure you're getting the credits you need. State Senator Polsky. You all are citizens. You all have your own issues. You need to talk to your elected officials. You need to vote. Um, this is an issue that has not, has not been dealt with properly in the last 25 years of one-party leadership. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that I could have fixed it. Uh, but what I am saying is that we didn't focus on it the way we should. We need to inspect more. We need more regulators, like Holly said. Um, okay. we, need to, we need a broad-based approach, and we need to talk about climate change. All right, Representative Overdorf. Your turn. Certainly. This, this is not a partisan issue. This is an issue that affects everyone equally across our state. And this is something that we absolutely have to continue to work through. Uh, this is a commitment that we've made in the legislature um, over the last uh, special sessions as well as session. Eleven bills have started this process. More are coming. Mm -hmm. Please review the My Safe Florida Home. Uh, review that. Look at ways you can harden your home. Look at ways you can get discounts. There are some okay. great insurance agents out there. Please work with them. Holly, over and over. go ahead. You're next. I know you, you yep, talked so really well. Go ahead. I'm just going to hit you with some value here. If you're, yeah, buying a home, if you're buying a home, know that the things that are making your home uninsurable are potentially negotiable. So ask the seller to credit you for a roof if, if that's in the negotiation. If you're selling a home, get okay. a wind mitigation inspection done before you list the home so you know what you're Boy, working I, with. We've heard a lot about that. Mark Freelander, you get the last word up in Tallahassee. Go ahead. 
Well, we're seeing some positive signs, actually. Hard to believe, I know. But five new companies approved. Depopulation with citizens, all good. The bad news is we're still seeing high levels of litigation abuse and claim fraud. So there's a lot of headwinds ahead of us. Mark Friedlander, to all of our panelists, thank you. To our studio audience, we Absolutely. appreciate you so much for coming in tonight. To all of you at home for trusting us with your time this evening. Yeah, it was a great discussion here on WPTV. And our conversation is going to continue online. We're streaming live on WPTV.com and on our app. From all of us here at WPTV News Channel 5, thanks so much for tuning in tonight. We'll see you soon.